Hello everyone and welcome. Um, today I wanted to talk about something near and dear to my heart. Um, I was browsing on the internet and watching YouTube videos and I noticed that there was a lot of instruments getting a lot of a lot of press and different channels on YouTube and stuff and in the news and in songs and stuff like everybody knows the guitar and the acoustic bass is getting gaining popularity especially like the rock bass and stuff the growling low sounds everybody loves that um, violin is starting to get popular too through Lindsey Sterling and orchestral pieces like two set violin and the piano guys so classical music is starting to blend in with contemporary and kind of mesh together but there's one instrument that's been left out and I think it's got a lot to offer, but everybody seems to be overlooking it. No one seems to be bringing it back. So, my goal is to bring it back, and that instrument is the banjo. Got here my five string banjo. Made this one. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, the violin's getting pressed. The guitar, I mean, the guitar is famous. No need to say anything more. The bass is getting pressed now, but where's the banjo? You know, whenever you think of a banjo, you always think of that hillbilly like. Banjo, there's a lot more to banjo than that, and actually it wasn't that long ago that banjo became associated with country music. So let me explain. The history is a little, little unsure on it, just like with most instruments, when does a guitar become a guitar? Is So with the banjo, people think it actually came from Africa. They'd have a short string on the top here, which is common of the five string banjo right there, short and string to get higher tuning. You know, they had three strings at the time, they thought. That uh, was like one short string up here. They actually still have some instruments like that. Short string up here and two long strings tuned. And they'd play them usually on, I don't know what they'd use for body, but it'd be a long stick for the neck. Um, this is like 1700s times. Um, about the time of the 1800s before the Civil War. Um, and as the slave trade was going on, as awful as it was, um, the people that were taken from their homes actually brought music with them and brought the instruments that they knew. If, if they couldn't bring the instruments, they at least make did with what they had. So the five string banjo isn't, is actually kind of a relatively new instrument compared to say violin or guitar or stuff. Guitar's been around for a long time, violin as well. The banjo's been around since maybe the 1800s. It's kind of vague. Um, not a lot of people are too sure on it, just because when does an instrument become an instrument and what classifies a banjo as a banjo? Um, but anyway, about 17 or 1800s or so, 1800, late mid to late 1800s to 1900s is when the banjo started really looking like it does today. But actually, back then, it was not it wasn't country music that was being played for they didn't really have country music back then what it was is it was actually more you know like you'd see all those performers the blackface performers would all be playing banjos like dixieland jazz kind of performers too they'd all be having banjos like you play the entertainer <laughs> so you know you get kind of like that music kind of like the V verging on classical mixed with kind of modern that whole vibe I don't know what you cl classify it but we know it today is kind of like folky stuff um, and as it moved on from there people developed different styles but it kind of remained unchanged until a man came along Earl Scruggs it's one of the most famous banjo players in the world he actually def really defined how the bluegrass banjo was supposed to sound most of the people at the time had been melodic like strumming um, or a claw hammer, which is essentially like you'll hear in all those old time kind of mountain songs. The, then Earl of Scruggs came along, 
he after hearing all those classical like old time songs and stuff claw hammer or melodic strumming or the jazz kind of dixieland jazz sound he decided to revolutionize the banjo a little bit he wanted to play it the way he wanted to so he came up with the classic bluegrass style the three finger plucking individual strings the blazing fast thousand notes a second 15 notes a second, if you will, coming out of the banjo. Um, and he revolutionized it, and that's where you get a lot of the old country songs, like old bluegrass songs. Um, where you get all the old bluegrass songs, you know, like all the famous ones when Earl Scruggs teamed up with Ricky Skaggs and Doc Martin they all got together flat picking guitar, mandolin, and a banjo so if that's where that whole theme came from that fast, blazing fast like tons of notes, not a lot of words just focus on the music kind of playing and then, actually the way banjo got tied into country music is rather interesting. I found out um, what all happened, what all started it was actually a TV show called The Beverly Hillbillies. And in it, the intro song, um, The Ballad of Judd Clampett, is famous for having a banjo. And that's actually Earl Scruggs playing it. I'll play the song real quick. Um, I'm sure a lot of older people know it. A lot of younger people probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But anyway, here it goes. So anyway, Earl Scruggs didn't want to play that song originally. He didn't want to play the Ballad of Judd Clampett because he did not want the banjo associated with all that country music and stuff, the hillbilly kind of idea. He didn't want that. So he refused at first, but finally he gave in to, and he played the song, and that's when the banjo became associated with the hillbilly kind of stigma. So anyway, after that whole association happened the banjo's kind of been stuck there it's kind of been stuck it's kind of been stuck in the whole idea of you know like overalls and a straw hat chewing on a piece of hay and picking the banjo on a hay bale um it's kind of been stuck there and no one's really been able to move it but i was thinking you know what if the banjo could be brought back to contemporary music as a whole and added into the whole group ensemble you know with guitar and bass throwing a banjo and if you add in the violins coming in you could have a big old grand old time playing music and stuff and just kind of continuing the tradition and keeping the instrument alive because not a lot of people play the banjo anymore I was just thinking it would be fun to make you know this whole thing about bringing the banjo back into the modern music because the banjo really does have a lot to offer. Because the banjo really does have a lot to offer for contemporary music as a whole. Because there's really no one banjo either. Like I said at the beginning, banjo, like, how do you define an instrument? How do you define a guitar? Most people would say six strings and stuff, you know, kind of the pear shaped body, sound hole in the middle. But then you run into trouble with archtop guitars, which have F-holes on each side. Or, you know, piccolo guitars, which are kind of smaller than cigar box guitars, which only have three, string, three strings and a square body. And how do you define it all? Well, the banjo's got a sim similar problem. Here's the classic five-string banjo everybody's seen and knows. It's got the fancy headstock fifth string halfway down the neck looks kind of odd and the drum head pot but there's actually been some innovations on the banjo along the way originally the banjo had about four different siblings or so there was the 
banjo lin, the banjo la, the banjo cello, and the banjo bass. I kid you not, there was a full orchestra of banjos. Right here, you can see it's kind of like a piccolo banjo, or this is a piccolo banjo tuned with heavy strings, so I tune it down, but um, yeah, you can shorten the neck on a banjo to get higher tones out of it to compete with violins. And you can also leave the frets off. This here is a fretless, I'll talk about that later in another video. But anyway, if you want a lower tone to compete with the basses, you can play the long neck banjo. Here's the standard again, right next to it. Let me set them both on the ground. You can see one neck's quite a bit longer than the other. The long neck was actually invented by a guy named Pete Seeger. He was a folk singer back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, I think. Um, don't quote me on that, but he played the banjo in its classic form, the five string that I showed you first. Um, but he had a lower voice, kind of a bassy voice, a good tenor. And he found singing with the five string banjo kind of hard because he'd have to sing up for it. So he took his banjo into the luthier to fix this problem. The luthier cut the headstock off. This here's called the headstock. The luthier cut the headstock off the banjo, added three more frets, and glued the headstock back on. And voila, you got the long neck banjo. The fifth string tuner here is now set at the eighth fret instead of the fifth adding in the three extra right down here. And the extra length tunes it, strings down to a nice low E usually, E major chord. Regular banjos tuned to G major here. So this one, you can get lower tunings, lower sounds out of it. get low tunings, compete with basses and stuff, get into that low growly area. Um, this one's also good if you're going to sing along, usually for deep voice guys, guys are usually deeper voice, but if you're going to sing along, like... got that lower tone it helps match the register that you know guys can sing in easier just because it's harder to go higher so you got the long neck banjo the regular banjo and the piccolo banjo it's a good thumbnail right there so the banjo comes in many different forms you know you pick whatever you want there's also a four string banjo doesn't have the fifth string tuner on the neck. That banjo is meant more for Irish music. You hear it a lot in Irish music, kind of the banjo strumming in the background. Um, um, it usually strums chords or picks single notes really fast. Um, there's also a six string banjo, which has guitar strings on it, but a banjo head and neck so that way you still get the banjo sound, but a guitar strings to guitar tuning, so if you play the guitar, you can transfer it over to banjo pretty easily. Come join the dark side. Or there's also different variants on the five string banjo here. You can add another tuner onto the headstock and create a six string banjo with a short high string here. Um, that one gives you a lower string, allows you to go more into the long neck banjo range. Or you can even add a seventh tuner, another one on the headstock here. And it goes even lower than the sixth string you could add to this. And that one competes really well in the low areas. You can move your hands down and play lower notes. Keep in the lower ranges if you want. You can add more strings to add more dynamics. You can play it like a guitar. You can play it like a mandolin. 
however you want. The banjo is just an all-around versatile instrument, whatever you want it to be. And it's got a lot to offer to modern music. But in the meantime, you know, it's just fun to pick some songs. <laughs> 